Chaldeans with uh, Jonathan Gasso and Jeff Oral from Park Home Healthcare. Park Home Care, not health care. Yeah. Um, Preventative and restorative care. Thank you. And that's what the park uh, acronym is, right? That's right. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what you guys have to offer, uh, your company, the way it started. Sure. Um, here with Junior Junior Binu also, as you guys as you all know. Um, so why don't one of you guys kick it off and let us know uh, about Park? Okay, uh, Park Home Care is a home health care agency. We provide skilled care, not non-skilled care. Um, what we do basically is, if a patient gets discharged from the hospital, a nursing home, or even if your doctor prescribes that this patient needs home care, mm -hmm. we send a physical therapist, occupational therapist, uh, a nurse whatever the patient might need to provide skilled care inside their home. Now to qualify for this, the patient has to be homebound. So in order to be homebound, it has to be very hard to leave the house right. or you need assistance with somebody to leave the house. It has to be some type of a taxing effort to leave. Sure. And then once we get into the house, we assess what the patient needs in terms of getting back to independence, um, being safe, preventing falls, whatever the diagnosis may be uh, for the patient that the doctor ordered. So you're coming to them, they're not coming to you in most cases. Yeah, and you know, a lot of our community, it's hard for them to leave the house anyway. Yeah. And especially our older population, some right. of them don't have caregivers, some of them live alone in uh, low income housing, yep. like the one by the church in Southfield. There's a uh, one on 13 Orchard Lake. They're they're all over yeah. Michigan. There's a new one. Uh, there's a new one by St. George or St. Joseph. Building a new one by St. Yep. George. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so is that open yet by the way? Uh, it is open. They, they haven't done like an official grant. These are retiring uh, homes. More or less. Okay. More or less. But so. still need home care inside right. these, right? Yeah. Because I remember, like, when we grew up, it wasn't um, available like it is today. It was really frowned upon. It's you took them inside your home. Yeah. You took care of them as best yeah, as yeah. you can, whether it was the kids that were helping out or it was, um, you know, our parents or what yeah. have you that did that. So it's evolved. And I think the first one was uh, for... Uh, our community was the Southfield Church, I believe, that we uh, right next to it opened up that. I believe. That's as far as I know, probably for the like senior 15 citizen. years ago, maybe. Yeah, that was the like first. Because yeah. they were a little bit timid. The, the older people didn't oh, yeah. want to leave their oh. families and be into this. So. Well, this service allows people to stay at home yep. now, and there's not, there's not the total need for a retirement home or whatever. Right. Yeah, and especially now, hospitals, especially if a patient goes to the hospital, Hospital stays are getting shorter and shorter. Correct. Yeah. You know, like 10 years ago, people are staying in the hospital for a week, yep. two weeks. Now they're they're trying to discharge you as fast as you can to get Turn you and home. earn. Mm -hmm. Turn and earn. So two things because of that. They're trying to save money because staying in a hospital costs a lot of money for Medicare and any other insurance you might have. And then two, the patients want to go home anyway. Yeah. Sure. The more you stay in the hospital, the weaker you're, you're going to get. You're more prone to infections. So they're trying to get the patient home. As fast yeah. as possible. So actually, monetarily speaking, home care, uh, as of right now, and probably will continue to be the most uh, least expensive form of treatment possible. And that's why a lot of things are starting to venture towards telehealth, right? So even the doctors themselves will somehow find a way to get into the patient's homes because mm -hmm. seeing them in the hospital system or the nursing mm -hmm. home system is just becoming too expensive. And that's something we provide. Yeah. So these, these are insurance. These are ins insuredly covered people. So yeah. how does one go about? Say someone's sitting at home now that that doesn't know whether they qualify or sure. don't qualify. How do they get themselves qualified for the insurance program or maybe some governmental assistance to have uh, to be one of your? Uh, well, patients? first, if they have any question, they can call our office right away. Okay. Most of the time, um, these patients have Medicare and Medicaid. Mm -hmm. Medicare covers home health services 100%. Mm -hmm. So you don't even need to use your Medicaid unless you might need some assistive devices or something. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Another thing is there's a hotline they can call to get more information from their Medicare, or you can go to medicare.gov okay. to give you some more information. But it's not just Medicare. Blue Cross Blue Shield covers it. Mm -hmm. All the major insurances yeah. actually cover There's a, there's a, there's a lot of insurances. I mean, they all have their own back-end steps that yeah. patient doesn't need to worry about. That's what we worry about. Yeah. But in terms of qualification, I mean, if they are covered by some of these more larger insurances, right, Humana, Cigna, Aetna, you know, yeah. and there's, there's even more than that. Uh, if you are covered under that, more than likely, you're going to be eligible for home care services. And a lot of our people, uh, you know, anyone born January 1st. Uh, but we had a lot a of birthdays. Yeah. Of, yeah, we had a lot of birthdays for sure. So so those people are perfect, ideal customers yeah. for you now because they're all getting up in age, right? right? The, the baby boomers. Yes. The baby boomers, If right. they need it. You know, the, the tough thing for marketing is we don't want to say, you need home care, come get home care. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But 
uh, unfortunately, like it's something that's a reality that we'll all have sure. to face one day. Yeah. So if you do ever need it, you know, we feel like, you know, our mission statement, what makes Park so great. Yeah. If you do need it, you know, feel comfortable being taken care of by us at Park Home Care. And that's, sorry, I, uh, no, that, yeah. my, my question to you guys is, so I end up, um, let's just say I'm in that position. Yeah. I mean, obviously you cater more towards elder because of mobility. Right. Let's say a guy in my case, I'm... 44 years old and sure. I run into a situation where let's just say like we're saying like I'm in a sling or something and I just can't be doing everything what have you how do I know about park is it that I had to know to get in touch with you or would that be my doctor referring to say there's a great home care service that we work with you know just so I know how to how, how does how do we meet you guys both ways really so me and John are spending a lot of time on marketing right now okay because you know this company was formed over a year ago so we're going around to different doctors. We're, we're hitting all our Chaldean doctors first. But we're, anybody who's in the area, though, we're, yeah. we're making the rounds to everybody that we have relationships with. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, whoever, I don't know who your doctor is, yeah. but hopefully they know who we are by now. Okay. That's one way. The second way is, yeah, you can just call us directly, and then we can call your doctor. I got you. And get the information. So, so it's either referral by either a friend or somebody who's gone through yeah, you guys right. in service, or it's going to be by doctor referral. Uh, to to give that okay, so that's a good way to. And then, somebody like yourself does. Sorry, no, no, somebody ahead. like yourself does qualify. Okay. So this isn't just aimed at uh, 65 and older, the geriatric population. Sure. If somebody your age or my age gets has a surgery and they go home, a lot of times those patients do qualify for home care. Mm -hmm. Maybe it might just be short lived. Might be yep. a few weeks. You might see me and John, um, but then after that, we'd like to transition you to outpatient therapy. Right. That's great. And you have uh, nurses, and the, both of you both speak Surath. You have nurses on staff yes. that speak Surath that go to the homes and, and could walk anyone through. And then how do you how do you help someone that, that doesn't know how to fill out the forms fill it out that only speaks Surath? You guys you guys have come across that, I'm sure. We do, you do. And, uh, you know, we train our staff that way. We, we do have a good, strong Chaldean team in place mm -hmm. who speaks uh, Arabic and Surath. Okay. Um, a lot of times we we just walk them through it. It's just uh, it's a lot of paperwork in the beginning, mm -hmm. yeah. but we take our time to make sure that you know they're signing everything, they understand everything, or there is a family member. Yeah, I was gonna say you'd be surprised at um, you know our our relatives that are elderly that only speak Sudeth. Uh, they they can read the important lines. Right, right. They sure. they they'll know a, a lot more than we sometimes give it credit for. They know. Yeah. They've I mean, been they've walking. been here a long time. Yeah. So yeah. so, so l luckily they they themselves will make it easy too. But again, you know, with our background, with our Sudeth, some of our nurses do speak Arabic as well. Mm -hmm. um, we 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 find ourselves being able to help them fill things out correctly. That's great. Are you guys uh, since you guys are marketing? out there pretty pretty actively yeah. and reaching out to the doctors are you finding where you're keeping up with the with the growth or are you are you looking for more growth yeah. we're definitely looking for more growth um, okay. this is a competitive business yeah. there's a, probably over 400 home care agencies in Michigan alone right now and then a lot of these uh, doctors are comfortable with certain agencies yeah so we try to go in there and let them know hey you know i'm jeff i'm the physical therapist i've been doing home care for over 10 years yeah i've been a physical therapist for over 14 years so we try and then i we also explain to them hey we both we know the language we have the experience right now we're really just trying to cater to the patient we're trying to make the experience so so amazing that they don't want to go anywhere else and sure. they can send that feedback to the doctor how young is um park home care when did you guys originate the business? I mean, it would have been 2018 is when we first talked yeah. about it. Summer of 2018 is when we first talked about it. And, I mean, that's that, I would say that's when it became concrete in our minds. Mm -hmm. But then as far as getting the, the name, the logo, I mean, you know, those those took oh, a yeah, few months. Oh, yeah, that takes time and setting 2018, up. 2018. Yeah. Around there. Did you guys, guys you, what got you guys involved in physical therapy or helping originally like yeah. what 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 made you decide I want to be a physical therapist so so I'll talk because I'm an occupational therapist but I'll talk to my experience first mm -hmm. uh, prior to um, becoming a professional like a master of occupational therapy um, explain what occupational therapy is for the people that don't yeah. understand it or know it yeah so occupational therapy um, you know even it's even take it further in the home care arena with occupational therapy, the focus is on what you can do with your upper extremity, so your upper body and your trunk, so everything above the waist, and how how strengthening those areas of muscle, how um, working on range of motion, your ability to yep. move your arms or, or your hips or your, your core muscles in certain ways, 
um, how that's going to impact what we take for granted day to day because you know everybody here at this table more or less is doing things independently sure. and we don't uh, we don't realize how much of an effort we're using when we go and reach up at a cabinet right to go right. to go get a glass of water now imagine if you just had um, reverse shoulder surgery yeah mm -hmm. now you're like man something that I do that's so trivial so every day mm -hmm. right uh, I, I know no longer am able to do now factor in also that you are over 75 years old and that's not gonna heal fast it's gonna take some time yeah you're gonna need an occupational therapist to help teach you how to use compensatory strategies other ways to use your other arm sure. or if that's not gonna be able to the case how can we figure out strategies to use the arm that you have um, that's currently surgically um, you know been surgically okay. invaded oh, right okay so how do we find ways to work with what you have right are we mm -hmm. gonna work on strengthening it mm -hmm. well there's limitations sometimes with strengthening you just had surgery a week ago are we gonna modify your home are we gonna not put every single cup at uh, waist level, so you no longer have to raise up your yeah. arm. I didn't think about that. And this right. is all part of your package. This is all part of your yeah. your thought process of entering a home. Correct. Well, that's, every time that's amazing. Walk, every time we walk into a house, we see so many things that uh, I won't. You won't see when you're looking at me. So if right. I'm ever training, because you know we'll also train employees as well. Yeah. And I and I'll ask them for feedback, like, so what did you see there? Oh, nice. And sometimes they'll be so um, so taken aback by what we observe because mm -hmm. trained clinicians, we are. We've been doing this for so long that we are trained to see certain things. I look at your posture. I see the way you sit, yeah. elbows on the table. We'll mm -hmm. talk about that later, right? Yeah. Patients so, get surprised. Like they, they're like, "Wow, you guys do all that!" Like a lot of times, they don't yeah. know exactly what we do. Well, it's it's um, you were you would have been more help for me a few years ago. I would have probably came to you knowing that you were around if, if today was two years ago. I had a partial tear to my rotary and my labrum has gotten loose, so yeah. I had to figure out how to compensate and work every muscle around it, because obviously in my situation, it makes it more difficult. Yeah. But again, I couldn't go through surgery, so I would have came to see somebody like you, right? Is that, that's is that, it, that's exactly okay. what it is. How are you feeling now? How's the shoulder it, feeling? It, it's better, you know, at yeah. times, you know, obviously if I ever do the sleep or sure, something, sure. you know, you try to stay away from stuff like that, but I still, from, um, from the uh, recommendation, I'm not supposed to be picking things over 25 pounds, yeah. or, but that's hard, man. You got nieces, you got little grandkids, you know, I'm not grandkids, I'm sorry. You got um, <laughs> godchildren and stuff that are, yeah. you know, four years old, six years old, and they come to jump in your arms and they're 60 pounds, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, you feel it. Yeah. But again, you would have been the guy that would have come to see then in that case. Right. Well, you can still okay. come in. So yeah. like, seriously. I probably, yeah, as I is, get older, it's gonna yeah. be needed. This so. is something we do, we do a free consultation. So let's just say somebody's on the fence, they're not sure. Right. Hey, no problem. Call, give us a call. Come yeah. in. We'll assess you. And you talked about the outpatient program. Yeah. So we also have an outpatient physical therapy clinic. Um, it's called Prevent Physical Therapy and Wellness. We're located on Maple and Drake, right here in West Bluefield. Nice. We're right across from Keiko's Dental. Shout out to Jessica Keiko's yeah. and Reggie Keiko's. <laughs> um, so that's been open since about October 2018. So that's a little bit different than the home care side. This Anybody can come to outpatient physical therapy as long as you're a doctor writes a prescription for it. Okay. Now there is something also that got passed in Michigan called direct access where you don't need a prescription right away, but eventually we'll need to call your doctor's office to get a prescription. Okay. I got you. So I'd be able to come see you. You you're could saying, come in, yeah. Like physical therapy and say, listen, okay. And then from that point, if we feel like we're going to need to continue it more, it's you're going to say, go see your doctor. yep, it's time to see the doc, get the prescription. Go see your doctor, doctor, get a prescription. At that point, I've already evaluated you because okay. I can evaluate you without the doctor's prescription. Okay. We'll send them the report. And then we always work in conjunction with all the doctors. Sure. Yeah, that's important. A game plan Our going. relationship with doctors uh, is very, very important, right? So like Jeff said, with direct access, um, sometimes we can see a patient even before a script is finalized, even, yeah. Yeah. even in home care. But... Okay. But with that being said, we need to collaborate and we need to have a lot of transparency with the doctor. Of course. Someone reached out to us. We sent someone to go see them. These were the findings. Um, they should go see you, right? We, mm -hmm. we, we encourage, and it's not even just an encouragement, it's almost mandatory. You've got to go see your doctor. You, you know, there are needs in home care that it looks like we're able to provide. We still need your doctor to sign off on it. Now, do you, did you notice me mimicking your posture now? You look good. <laughs> Hands on the table. You look real Everybody. good. So, Jeff, what about you? What got you into uh So, uh, it's an interesting story. Um, I was about 18 or 19 at the time, and uh, my best friend, a shout-out to Dr. Fadi Alaya from MIU. All right. Um, All right. Um, his you. sister was a pharmacist at the time. So, at that time, she, we were always talking, Jeff, what do you want to be when you grow up? And, and I wasn't sure, I'll be honest with you. So, she's like, why don't you look into physical therapy? 
So I said, sure, you know. So what I ended up doing is I ended up volunteering at St. Joseph Hospital in Pontiac mm -hmm. at 18 years old oh, wow. in their physical therapy department. I did a once a week every Saturday, and I said, wow, this is, this is pretty cool. I like, I like interacting with people. I like helping people. Um, so then I went to Wayne State. Mm -hmm. um, I, I applied to the program, but then for whatever reason, I decided not to do it anymore. It, it was weird. So I got nervous. There was a lot of changes going on with the insurances and different yeah. things. 9-11 uh, had happened. There's just so much going on. I switched to information systems management, business school at Wayne State, which I did. I got my degree, and, and I hated it. I completely regretted not going to physical therapy school right away. So then I ended up calling Wayne State. I'm like, guys, I know it's been a few years. <laughs> Remember when you accepted me back in 2002? <laughs> They're like, yeah, we have your application here. So I reapplied. They, they accepted me. And so the rest was history. I've been a physical therapist now for over 14 years. I, I love it. My passion is helping people, getting them better. Physical therapy helps with pain management, yep. um, you know, restoring your function. We're like uh, human movement scientists, you know. Sure. We look at the whole body, the way it moves, and we try to figure out ways to help you get stronger, more active, and, that's and that type of nature. So. So if, if I if let's say if I didn't get a um, doctor's um, recommendation, prescription write up or what have you, I know my pain because yeah. of an amputated situation. Sure. I know when I've been down that road, wouldn't I be able just to walk in and say, you know, guys, uh, you know, I, I need I need this right now. Yeah. I don't feel yeah. like going. Let me just jump through the hurdles you and could. come right to you. So back to direct access. So it got passed about a year ago. Okay. So now anybody can walk right into the clinic mm -hmm. without a doctor's prescription. For the first 10 visits, we can treat you. But eventually, after 10 visits or 30 days, whichever comes first, mm -hmm. we're going to need a doctor's referral. Okay. Now, the sad part is that insurance agencies are not reimbursing us sure, for yeah. this. Yep. So that's why we still kind of go back to the old ways, getting a doctor's referral, mm -hmm. calling the doctor, which we still <laughs> want to work with him anyway. We yep. want to talk about how we can get you better. You know. Would I be able to bypass the insurance and say, listen, I'm not even dealing with it. I don't want to go. You could. I can come in. I just want to just pay you for this. And how many of the times I need it, I can just get service through you. Yeah, guys. we do cash. We do cash based. And then at that point, um, we'll still probably call your doctor. Let them know, hey, yep. he's coming in uh, for so many visits. Sure. We're going to do cash based. Yeah, you can definitely bypass. That, that happens in home care, too. Yeah. Yeah, we still we get in there. There are private pay, and uh, we'll still go through the entire system of how we would do it, even if it was uh, insurance was paying for it. We'll still inform the doctor. We'll still send the doctor all the paperwork, even though yep. the patient's private paying. Again, that's that's a commitment to the industry. I don't mm -hmm. think so. Sure. We won't have to do that, right? It's private pay. Yep. But that's our commitment. That's our commitment to to helping our patients. That's our commitment towards having really good relationships with doctors because marketing can be tough. But and so can insurance companies too. They can be a pain in the ass. Sometimes. Absolutely. I mean, that's why I want to sometimes it's a jump. Very challenging. Yeah, well, that's why I'm saying if I want to go past that and skip yeah. it, I yeah. sometimes I just would rather financially take the burden on than to go mm -hmm. deal with the stress of talking to these guys to get this, you know, to pass. And to speak to that, uh, Jay, I would say because of our reputation, mm -hmm. I mean, I would say that I'm very good at my job. I would say Jeff is obviously very good at his job. We do have private pay clients, mm -hmm. and. Again, it, it can be a financial burden. It'd be almost easier and better if your insurance does pick it up. But mm -hmm. I mean, the insurance industry, the insurance monster itself is, is so difficult to even comprehend that sometimes you just would rather deal with it if you know that what you're going to get is going to be a, a great product or, you know. Service, yeah. So if someone were to come into, so if someone one were to come into the outpatient program, right? What kind of equipment do you have there? What kind of facility? What size of the facility is it? Okay. What does it look like? What would, what would they expect? It's a very beautiful, modern facility. Um, everything's been updated from bottom to top. Um, we have all the different equipment you might see at like your local gym, Lifetime, all the major stuff that we use. Mm -hmm. And then we have semi-private rooms. And then we ha also have private treatment rooms. And all my tables are the most comfortable and high-low tables to get the patient in and off the tables safely. And also we have a lot of modalities ultrasound, um, something that increases blood flow and stimulation. Sure. I don't know if you ever had yeah, that. that what's it called? Tens, ten, tens, tens, yep. Tens, tens yep. unit. Tens, yep. I had to do it because I had an ACL replacement, so I had to use it for that muscle along the quad sure. to be able to stimulate it again. Yeah. Um, besides the modalities, though, like we're very hands-on. Yeah. This mm -hmm. is why 
our patients keep calling us back and, and requesting us because we don't just push them to the side. Hey, go do your exercises, and I'll see you in a half hour. Right. No, no, we're, we're really hands-on. You're right so, there with us. Um, it, it does take um, more continued education for manual therapy training. Mm -hmm. So that's something Jeff and I are pretty well-versed in and yeah. continuing to continuing to grow with it. There's always so much to be learned. Mm -hmm. But manual therapy is um, also a big part of what we offer that people really like. So they feel like they're getting a massage. Again, to them, it's a massage. Right. To us, we're it's obviously therapy. using, yeah, we're using manu um, manual muscle techniques mm -hmm. um, for whatever the particular injury may be. Yeah, any joint in your body yep. can get mobilized. So we do something called joint mobilizations. Mm -hmm. And we, and physical therapists, a lot of people don't know this, we can also do spinal mobilizations, like manipulations. It's a little different than what a chiropractor does. Yep. Uh, we're a little bit more um, localized in that area, but there's programs, like there's one at Oakland University where you can get your two-year certificate to become specialized in spinal mm. manipulation mm. and that type of thing. So we're always trying to better ourselves yeah. and reach out for continued education. You said you were an occupational therapist, yeah. and what would I'm you refer? I'm a phys physical therapist. Okay, so, so basically you're going in and working the actual body part by part, needing whatever, and then your biggest thing is... Uh, so, so like I said, you know, referring to the, we call them the activities of daily living. Yep. Again, when you find yourself suffering a setback in life, yep. you forget how to, um, you forget things that you've taken for granted. That's how I like to use it. Um, and so we find strategies. We find strategies and ways to help you do the things that you were doing so easily before. Sure. And we incorporate that from a, a musculoskeletal, musculoskeletal standpoint. So we still do. We still are well versed in, um, you know, muscle muscle education, muscle re-educating. Somebody had a stroke. They work very closely with an occupational therapist to help re-educate um, muscles and, and nerves that they've lost function of in their body. Sure. Now, sure. now, something we've been um, really focusing on of late, part of mm -hmm. our marketing initiative, um, we introduced this program about three months ago, is our opioid step-down program. Wow. So we're huge on pain management. That's, that's one of the things that me and John, every patient almost comes to us with pain, like 90%. Yeah. And how do they get rid of their pain? Yep. A lot of doctors, you know, we all know there's an opioid epidemic going on. Yeah, it's been correct. going on since the early 2000s. It's getting a little bit better now, but it's still not where it needs to be. Right. Um, so something we're doing is called an opioid step-down program. So a lot, let's just say you had knee surgery. Yep. So a patient gets knee surgery, their doctor discharges them with Vicodins. Yep. So we all know how addictive these opioids can get. Patients, they have no idea. They're taking it every four hours. They're just, right. they're just mm -hmm. popping their pills, you yep. know? But what we try to do is educate them on the side effects that you are taking an opioid and this is how we want to slowly wean you off these opioids. So it's mm -hmm. called our step down program. So we call the doctor up, we educate our staff on this, we let them know this patient's taking this type of opioid right now, and we like to possibly wean them off in the future, with your permission obviously, we run it all by the doctor. Mm -hmm. But we keep track. If they're yeah. taking Vicodin three times a day in the beginning, yep. what's your pain tolerance? We write it down. So we have a very like uh, in-depth protocol to it. Yeah. We've had very, very high success rate with it. So okay. it seems to be working really well, and it's resonating well with doctors, um, just because they don't want their patients. Is there a name to that program that you guys are? So it's the, it's our opioid yeah, our opioid step down program. Step down that's what we refer okay. to it with physicians. The protocols that we have behind the scenes that we have our therapists and our nurses educated on we've seen there's been a lot of success with it and doctors have actually really been um, resonating really well with our mission behind it so how do you get someone to actually admit to abusing the opioid yeah, believe it or not there there's a lot of that obviously and uh, we, we had a patient who's been on vicodin for basically his whole life yeah, yeah. um those guys once you get addicted at that point it is yes. definitely harder yes, to is. wean them off mm -hmm. there's still things that like mm -hmm. somebody like that guy has never tried physical therapy before occupational therapy yeah. mm -hmm. so we we did have some success we got him down we didn't completely get him off his medications yep. right but even if you can reduce it by 25 percent, yeah you don't want to be on these medications they're just no. masking the pain yep so this is a proactive step this is a, a program this is not you're not trying to cure the opioid addiction. No. You're just making sure it doesn't get to that point. That's or or, or weaning them off is what he's right. saying. So like, if, right. let's use a guy like, uh, we'll go back just a lot because I can go physically, but yeah. when I lost this, they had me on morphine, Percocets, mm -hmm. Vicodins, yeah. 
um, Town Hall 3 and 4. This was all in a 45-day period because wow. every week wow. it was changing where I I was wasn't, immune to it a week right, later. It wasn't working, wasn't working cuz yeah. they had me on it. So they would jump me to the next to the next to the next and finally I just said to myself, "Hold on." I caught myself having a shot of Hennessy and doing yeah. that to try yeah. to, you know, and I was like, "Whoa, you know, I woke up and was like, "Man, this is this is not good." I, so I would have come to see them to say, "You know, help me with my pain to fall through with this and get me off of this or listen I need to cut down from four times a day to yeah. once if I really need it and that's where you guys would step in yeah and, th and that's where we'd step in and and unfortunately um, it's still happening now they're kind of pushing our services to the side still so somebody might go to a doctor Who's they? like the doctors like okay. you know some of these physicians some of these physicians now there's some physicians right away PT, OT first yeah try yeah. this out before they might prescribe something like a low dose yeah but a lot of times Patients will get prescribed those opioids right away, and there's no sign of physical therapy in, in their future. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to educate the doctors, the nurses, the patients, of course, too. They need to right. know their rights. So right. there's almost any any physical ailment, there's a physical therapy f solution, yeah, too, right? right? Right. Anything. It could be TMJ. You don't yeah, even right. think about your jaw. You yeah. have jaw pain? Yeah. We yeah. treat TMJ. Yeah. yeah. So there's a solution. It doesn't have to, you don't have to mask it with. With, with opioids or with right, drugs right. or pharmaceuticals. Right. right. So, I mean, even if we see other industries are, are promoting how, like, you know, other other forms of holistic forms of medication, mm -hmm. yep. right? Therapy, just like in those other boats, we we have the same thought process. Yeah. There are there are solutions, right? I mean, we don't we don't want to give that false impression that you'll be completely. Uh, removed of opioids. That's mm -hmm. that's a that's a long term goal we would hope sure. for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we do what we can to educate. So we, we do provide them with therapy services. We do tell them about, like you said, the tens unit. A lot of these modalities, um, you can have them now mobile. You can order them. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. uh, again, people anyway. aren't aware of their resources. Right. So you need to hear it from somebody who's skilled. Somebody. So you need to hear it from people who have been doing this. Who who have their own their own anecdotal stories. I can tell you how many patients of mine have ordered stuff off Amazon because of what we worked on for mm -hmm. the past, you know, month, month and a half. Right? And what are they going to order off of Amazon? So there's, you know, you can order a TENS unit. You can order a mobile TENS unit. You can... Well, let's, let's explain like a TENS yeah, unit. Just, that's yeah, that's exactly. That would help you. So out. transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, it kind of helps by tricking the brain into thinking you're not having pain in a certain area. Mm. So it has like, it has electrodes basically. There's these tiny little electrodes. You can do two or four mm. to cover the body part that, that needs to be treated. Mm -hmm. And you use it for about 15 or 20 minutes mm. and you can increase the intensity as high as you want. You feel like little yeah. vibrations yep. all over your body. Yep. And, and it really helps actually. And yeah. uh, a lot of patients, can just go to Amazon and buy one. Right. Their insurance doesn't but Before, it. it used to be expensive. I know yeah. it was like $350, $400 when I had, in 2009, I had my ACL replaced. I, we had to get it from them, pay them that. You can get them right now for about 80 bucks yeah. or 70 80 you know. Yeah, like the basic kind. You get yeah. like the basic yeah, ones. Yeah, basic. What it does is funny. It's like. I've it, had it done have, through uh, Francis. Yeah, yeah, yeah Francis, yeah. Fran Francis George, Francis McCully George. You know her. Yep. You get, yep, Francis is great. Yep. She's very deep into holistic. She's awesome. Yep, yes. yep. So, um, she's uh, if you guys connect with her, I mean, you guys probably can share clients and anything. We but, actually we do have a few clients with Francis. You do. Shout okay. out to Francis. Yeah, yeah we yeah. all she's the bomb. She's, yeah, she's my <laughs> that's my girl. Neighbor. What do you mean? Yeah, that's that's she's that. awesome. She cut me up one day. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Did the cupping? Just just for a quick joke because. She can give a shit less when it comes to telling you how it is. Yeah. When I first met Frances, yeah. you know how I met her? At Powerhouse Gym over on Orchard Lake Road. Yeah. My sister told me about her because of, like, the whole, you know, pain, what have you. Okay. She shoved her hand right in my mouth, right in the middle of us talking to feel the muscle, how tight it was. Near. And I said, like, what, like, what are you doing? And, and she just said, hey, just hold on for a second. Yeah. But, yeah, she just goes deep and she doesn't care. Jeez. Pain means nothing to her. Yeah. She's there oh. to put it down. She's not here to comfort you and give you a no. spa massage. No, she's, she's yeah. very well yeah. known. That's, uh, very, yeah. that's a very solution-based mindset. And, yeah. you know, we will, we will introduce things that you might find so odd and so peculiar, but yep. again, it with, work with backgrounds, with our backgrounds, you yeah. know, yeah. trust us, right? She's a really nice patient. We actually do share some high profile uh, yep. cash patients yep. with her. Yep. She, like she's very, she's well got into the, the yeah. industry. Yeah. And uh, she actually came to my, to our outpatient office. Yeah. And my first time meeting her, actually, I spoke to her on the phone many very times. Very nice. The nicest person. And she's telling me about cupping. So she did cupping on you. Yeah. 
The next day, she comes in with the whole cupping system. Yeah. Yeah. Here you go, Jeff. No Thank you. Asked. No questions yeah. asked. Thanks for all your advice. What? That's, and then she just it. left. I'm like, Francis, hang on. Yeah. So she's, that's she's awesome. So you have uh, you have nurses on on staff, and do you do you contract nurses out also, or is that? Or, or? We do. We do work with some contracting yeah. agencies. Okay. There's a lot of those, especially in some areas that are hard to get to, um, down river, Detroit. Um, so we do contract with some nurses. But our main nurses are all Chaldean speaking. They serve us pretty much all of Oakland County. Yeah, I right. mean, if it's not going without saying already, I mean, because home care, you're being treated in your home, mm -hmm. we're not, we don't just look to attract people who live in West Bloomfield, right? Because sure. we travel, we, we get yeah. in our cars and we drive. Yeah. Sure. So, I we're mean. We're bigger in population too right. now as well, too, right. as, as a whole. So, so we see patients in, in pretty much every major county that surrounds. I mean, I would call it a 45, 45 minute drive radius, sometimes an hour. Yeah, wh whatever it takes, yeah. listen, whatever it takes, if this is what we promise to stand by. As soon as a doctor sends out that prescription, we're there within 24 to 48 hours. Oh, we wow. don't care where you live. And if we can't get there, we're sending somebody who yeah, could. Okay. Yeah. And then, so home health care is do you have a nurse that's there all day, some overnight? No, so that would be more uh, Hospice, it's private style, duty, that's private, correct? Yeah, yep. private but, duty pay. Where, where yep. more they go, and maybe not. They could go every day, sure. But the visit usually takes about an hour yeah. or less. Yeah, it's, it's all depends on the need. So the, the doctor, the doctor will say uh, what the need is, and uh, so the visits themselves, they're not all day visits, as was what you might be thinking of. So it's it's not it's not a not a daycare, care, but well, not a stay-in. So it's a, not a live-in so or stay-in. They call right, them right. caregiver programs, right? Yep. So some of these non-medical companies, they have caregivers who spend time with the Not patient. a caregiver, right. right. So, so this this is it's, someone that's trying to improve this person's and, mobility. And so yep. the difference yes. is... Or that, a quality of life. So exactly. it's called skilled home care services. You know, okay. you know uh, hospitals will call, companies will call, uh, you know, even like law firms will call. Are you guys a skilled home care service? Because they know if you're in the industry, you know there's the skilled services which offer physical therapy, occupational therapy, yeah. speech therapy, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then there are the non-skilled home care companies, which um, they're still skilled, but they're just non-skilled yeah. in the sense that um, they don't send out skilled clinicians. They send out caregivers. Mm -hmm. Caregivers to spend, you know, up to eight to fourteen hours, however long, with that particular loved one. And so, when your nurses or you guys go to a house, you're are you bringing? equipment with you yeah yeah oh. so that's the that's the beauty of it we we can the tens units yep. um ultrasound machines we're mm -hmm. bringing you know therapy weights, weights, weights. Therapy so it's bands. what stuff we would go to physically driven ourselves to to get to them yeah we're, they're just bringing it we're to, bringing to, it to they're mobile bringing it to, to the house yeah. gotcha. what's cool about these guys is um their age gap and how they came together like i like you guys have you know you got yeah. younger and you got older like we're not yeah. gonna say <laughs> old school to me you know we're just but but i like that you know you guys have that gap between you yep. guys in age have that ability to offer a little bit of different perspectives in yeah. it what brought you guys together how did you guys come up with this whole thing and <laughs> i'll be honest with you so uh we used to work together yep. at our okay. old employer and um i walked into this patient's uh house you know her, her room one day and She's like, John's coming. I'm like, who's John? You know? Yeah. So okay. then, and then this guy rolls in. I'm like, who the heck is this guy? Like, yeah. you know, he just came in all confident yeah. and ready to go. Sounds like me. Yep. And the <laughs> patient was like, yeah, John did this last time. And this, I'm like, well, who's this John guy? I can't wait to yeah. meet him, you know? So then I, I, we, we meet and I felt like I've known him. Like, you know, as soon as we started talking. But that was our formal introduction was at a patient's house. Yeah, That's literally. Cool. Like, I'm he, like, so you're Jeff? He's like, you're John? Yeah. That's a great story. So, uh, so we met and um, I liked the way he was talk. I was just observing everything he was doing, by the way. Good. The way he was talking to the patient and, and what he was doing and how the patient was re responding to him. I'm like, that's pretty impressive. I didn't know how old he was at that time. Yeah. But uh, I knew he, he just he started working. Beard to kind yeah, of he's bring trying up, to bring up a couple man, years. Yeah. This guy, my brother, I don't get it with them and their beards, <laughs> man. On, you man. guys love I know. I'm sorry. Come I'm on. sorry. Don't bring I'm saying you guys are just. You. Don't bring you right, into this. Right, I don't think. Right. <laughs> Shout out to my brother. Has been shaved since I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I will not go clean shaven. It's just, guys. I'm already unattractive as it is. You see me without a beard? What do you mean? You guys are good looking well, young men. Let's get a little little personal. Yeah, Birth sure. many what too? Birth many. I'm, I'm Jeff Oro. Um, yeah. My dad's Samir. My mom's Ahlam. And I have a sister, Anita Oro. Okay. And uh, my brother in law is Paul Hakem. I don't know if you guys know him. Oh, yeah. OBGYN. That's my brother, man. Oh, my, yeah. my, you're Anita's brother. I'm no Anita's way. brother. I'm Gloria's first cousin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I've known Anita. God, I just. Why are you guys yeah. Isn't that you crazy know, what you started? Yeah. Well, Listen, I just ran. I hadn't seen her for a long time, <laughs> yeah. and I ran into her at Shesh Bash over on Orchard. And <laughs> Place I, is the bomb, by the way. Oh, that's great, the great food. Shesh so, Bash is no joke. Yep. So I, so I just 
turned to her for a second yeah. and, and and she said what are you getting and i said i'm just ordering it's pretty good over here and yeah. she said, by the way i know you <laughs> and i looked i said you know i didn't want to be rude and say yeah. something and just be like yeah. hey you know because i don't want to think i'm hitting on her. Yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm saying shout out to paul i'm not <laughs> yeah. hitting on her okay so but. so i've known paul too since we were kids you know uh, paul and mike and them yeah. um so I, so uh yeah, I've known her for a yeah, long time. Yeah. yeah, my sister's Michelle. I don't know if you ever know Michelle. Uh, maybe if, I, new, but if I met her, I would. But like yeah. honestly, yeah. I don't know a lot of people. But I know a lot of old people. Yeah. <laughs> now you tell an old person who oh, Jeff Foro yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know who Jeff Foro is right yeah. away. You know, because I've been doing this for ten years, yeah. working with a lot of these patients. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm Jonathan Gasso. Uh, yep. I mean, my parents are Thomas and Lamia, but. I'm sure maybe for your viewers, I'm one of the six Gasol boys. Right. Right. <laughs> Salim Gasol's brother. Yeah. Is there really six of you guys? Yeah. yeah. Six of us. Wow. Yeah. Six of us. And um, they got a hardworking mom. She works out yeah. religiously at Lifetime. Well, She's, okay. Yeah, my mom gets yep. to 6 a.m. sometimes. Yep. She used to tell me, like, I saw yep. Junior today. Yep. And <laughs> said that. So, yeah, I'm one, of, I'm one of the six boys. And all right. uh, very proud to be one of the six boys. I, I mean, we all conduct ourselves very well. Good crew. Good crew. Yeah, man. solid yep. crew. Tight, tight yeah. boys, man. They're, yeah, don't make you can't mess with a gasso no. or an acho, really. No, that, achos, well, the achos, achos and the gasso is always growing up. Yeah, <laughs> achos use the gassos as protection. Yeah, man. yeah, that's yeah, so what it is. Oh, yeah, what yeah. so it is. Yeah, we are, we are strength in numbers for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah, no, no but doubt. but John is very organized, <laughs> super smart. He's always ahead of the game. We recently just had a survey, by the way, and we passed with flying colors because of this guy. Right awesome, here. beautiful. He's more the warrior in the group. Yeah, I'm more like laid back, like John. It's gonna be okay. I know. I wonder if he's had way too much experience on his hands. <laughs> So oh he's, he's never worried. I'm like, Jeff, I'm getting out the be... old card. Yeah, yeah I'm like, Jeff, we need to be worried about this, this, and that. And yeah. he's like, uh, John, we'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. That so. comes with wisdom, by the way. You know it is? He's it's not smarter. We're he's not... Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, not, we're not, just so you know, we can give you a little wisdom with those few years. So, so you're both married with children? Yep, my wife is Rena Oro. Hi, honey, I love you. <laughs> and uh, I have two sons, uh, Zachary and Jordan Oro, five and uh, almost two. Awesome. Cool. And uh, so your, your wife is a pharmacist. Oh, by the way, my wife is a pharmacist. She hey, works at nice. St. Joe's. And it goes back to, so uh, yeah, I'm married. I have, I have a young son, Jordan. And, God bless. Uh, thank you. And my wife, she's in school. She's going to be a nurse anesthetist. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that. Uh, What's an anesthetist? A nurse anesthetist. <laughs> yeah. Anesthetist. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. Um, anesthesia, isn't it? Right. So the, yeah. so the, an okay. anesthesiologist comes that in. Makes sense now that I yep. heard it correctly. Yep. yep. Anesthesiologist comes in and he. Um, he puts or the she. patient. Oh well, yeah, he or she puts. Very yeah. true. He or she will put the patient um, under. under anesthesia. A nurse anesthetist um, supervises and watches, monitors the, yep. throughout the entire case. Oh wow! Um, so dual income. Yeah. So she might have to, you know, she might end yeah, up. Yeah, you retire. retire. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're, you're, <laughs> she's, she's gonna retire. Know. She's gonna go ahead and you yeah, know put the whole bill a, at the house and everything. That's a possibility. That's a possibility, Jeff. I'm um, looking for a uh, future partner. Yeah. Right? <laughs> no, I may not be. Around. But I gotta say, um, one of the things that I really, really appreciated about Jeff is, now, nobody knows this, right? But I just feel like sharing it. Yeah. Uh, I reached out to Jeff. I said, Jeff, can you? Um, can you grab like let's grab dinner and i asked so we're, we're having dinner and we're talking and i was like jeff do you think that i could do this mm -hmm. do you think i could start a home care company yeah um i've got that entrepreneur blood in me i mean with my father with what he does and my siblings so much of them are self-employed or so many of them are self-employed i always knew i wanted to be self-employed i always figured do what you want to do first and then find a way to turn that into a business, a business right? You yeah, can yeah. do anything. It doesn't sure. matter, right? But if you have that entrepreneurial uh, DNA, mm -hmm. you'll find a way to turn it into something. And to be honest, for occupational therapy, it was pretty difficult. You don't see too many outpatient occupational therapy clinics. You even hear, we offer we offer occupational therapy yeah. at our clinic, but you see how second nature it is to refer to it as a physical therapy clinic. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's a little bit difficult to find an entrepreneurial side to occupational therapy but I knew that I liked home care and I knew that we could, I could find a niche because I'm a clinician, mm -hmm. I can still treat patients and I myself am running my own company. So, so what was his answer, no? So I asked Jeff, <laughs> I said, Jeff, do you, think, do you think I could do this? Yeah. And he said, 100%, yeah. you can totally do this. Awesome. And the reason why I respected it so much is I didn't want somebody he didn't know that I actually wanted him to do this with me. Yeah. I reached out to him saying, yeah. Jeff, do you think I can do this? And then. He's joined forces and. And then when he told me, he never once said, he never once said like, 
yeah, let me do this with you. He never mm -hmm. tried to elbow yep. his way in. I'm yep. always about trying to help you know anybody. If yep. somebody wants to start their own clinic, I will gladly show yeah. you the blueprint on how to do it. You know, there's there's Great. enough business and patience for everybody in this sure. community. So the next day, I called him. I was like, um, so Jeff, I know the I know the clinic. He had started the clinic on his own at first, yeah. uh, and I said, Jeff, you want to do this home care thing with me? Yeah. I mean, and of course he was really excited about it. Yeah. Where were we at? Uptown. He was uptown. Hey, bro, you want to grab a drink? <laughs> <laughs> I don't Sunday? Know what was it Sunday it, night? It might have been. It, it was, was busy. So it was busy. Actually, it was right. either Thursdays. I was going to say, how did you guys get in conversation? Sunday nights are too that, wild there. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's funny because my sister was there yeah, with yeah. her friend, and there she's like, "What are you doing here?" I'm like, yeah. "I'm meeting somebody." She's like, "Who?" And I'm like, "I introduced him to John." Yeah. And uh, I'm like, "Yeah, we're gonna be right over there if you need me, sis." So yeah. we just started yeah. putting the game plan together. How are we gonna do this? You know, um, what's our strategy? Do I want to do this? I had a lot of things going on at that time. Mm -hmm. But then I kept going back to John and his skill set and, and his hunger, mm -hmm. his drive to want to do it. Which is I huge. said, this is the perfect compliment. It's, it's, I'm sure every job, everybody will be very satisfied with their own jobs. I just feel like it's hard to find a job um, more satisfying than being in this industry because of course, people. of course, of course, we get paid to do what we do, yeah. but it's instant gratification. You're yeah. rewarding. And that's really hard. That's hard to come about in, in a broad spectrum of work itself. Mm -hmm. But in an industry where every day I'm looking at how I can make this person's life easier mm -hmm. or make them feel better. And boy, do people show their gra uh, gratification and when you help sure. them. Um, that's what makes it easy. That's what makes this job easy. You're fixing their problem. Well, right. and you know how hard it is to impress our, our people. Absolutely. Yeah. That's oh, what they're, yeah. they're picky. Hey, listen, they'll tell you Big right time. up front. They yeah. don't like you. You're, no, they're never going to see you. No, not the Chaldean. The Chaldean. No way. I love all our Chaldean people. Man, some of them are pretty picky. That's yeah. why we go the extra mile. Yeah. We go above and beyond. Yeah. So you guys complement each other very well in, in the on the physical side. Your lower extremities, your upper extremities. Yeah. Uh, how do you guys complement each other in the, in the uh, day business day. management side of things? That's a great question yeah. actually um that's why i have my own show yeah, good, I, good, we have our own good show. question <laughs> yeah. uh, honestly um because i never get too high or too yeah. low on anything mm -hmm. um, i'm pretty i'm always like right here with Even things Q. yeah so in business you know john might get a little worried about a, a few yeah. different things I'm like, hey, bro, listen, this is the right strategy. Let's let's see if this is gonna work this way. Sometimes so, I need to hear that, right? Yeah, so yeah. I'm I'm looking I'm looking at the bank account. And I'm looking <laughs> at you know our outgoing expenses. I'm looking at incoming, uh, you know, incoming money, and I'm yeah. like, and I'm telling Jeff, uh, Jeff, this is what we got to do. And I can become a little bit high strung at times about it. Chad always just comes in, never worried, and it brings yeah. me I mean, back. We get a lot of rejections, yeah. guys. This you is need not that. easy. No, yeah, yeah, no, no but you need that balance. What you're saying, that's yeah. that's huge because um, at the end of the day, your team is gonna need to right. see that that the two can mash well. Yeah. So that means the whole company's yeah. gonna run well. It's a perfect. And so, you mentioned John being organized and yep. meticulous and. I, I'm, and that's totally who I am. So it's funny if there ever is a long day or a stressful yeah. day, and I go home like, oh my god, like what do I got to do tomorrow? Yeah. It's funny because I'm like. Jeff will tell me everything's going to be all right. <laughs> yeah. Jeff will say everything's going to be all right. Jeff will say everything's going to be We're getting rejected a lot. It's, it's not easy. It's okay. But, yeah. but we're, 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 we're part we of our success, strength. right? We know we our strengths. We keep growing. We know it's our still, weaknesses. Yeah. We play off of those. Yeah. And honestly, we I think that's what makes Park Home so, well, so good. Well, in regards to what you just said right now, you said that's how we're growing. What is your growth plan? And are you guys currently hiring right now? And if you are, what departments are you in need of? We're always hiring. Um, we're hiring for physical therapy, nursing, uh, home health aides. Um, mm -hmm. we, we definitely, nursing is high on our priority right now. Sure. Yeah. For all of Oakland County, Wayne County. Um, what How is the nursing market now? I used to own a company called Nurse Now. We used okay. to have a nurse staff. We were yeah. nurse staffers uh, back in the day. This is 10 years ago, 12 years ago, or something like that. But sure. It was it was a really competitive business. Yeah. Uh, the nurses that were not working weren't working because they sucked, yeah, or they were blacklisted or yeah. were, you know whatever. So so how do you find nurses these days? It's really hard. We yeah, we, we gotta work. we gotta sell me and John basically, and, yeah. and that it's a great company, and and basically we're small enough to where we try to make them feel like they're part of the company, yeah. which they are. It's like it's very family oriented <clears throat> right now. So we try to tell them, hey guys, come with us. It's it's in its infancy right now, mm -hmm. but we're heading to bigger and brighter things. So again, we use we we borrow on our experiences and we use that for training. So everybody gets to know, like you know, even if even if home care is not a strong suit of yours, but there's reasons why you're interested in doing it. Mm -hmm. um, We'll, we'll spend time with you. We'll, we'll, we'll invest our time in you. 
to, to help you and get so, better. So a nurse that is working those crazy nurse hours, uh, the, the uh, grueling yeah. nursing yeah. hours, can come to you and not to take a break, but will get relief from that yeah, mad, so maddening flexible. schedule so, that, they, that they're dealing with. So that's I think that's what attracts people it's to lower, working yeah, in, sure. uh, yeah. in home care is there's, there's autonomy, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's flexibility. And you know you make your own schedule with the patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So I mean, if those twelve-hour days, you know, we do have nurses that have full-time jobs mm -hmm. at the hospitals, and they have the, and yeah, then they'll pick they up, right? They'll just days. pick up a couple patients because it's more at their own pace. Maybe they schedule patients from twelve to two. Mm -hmm. You're still sleeping in. You're not working late. Right. It's very yeah. attractive yeah. for that. It person. is, especially someone who has a family and they're just looking for you know oh, yeah. a few extra hours here and there. It's perfect for yeah. that person. So, so if you're out there, I know a lot yeah. of girls that are in nursing school and and, right that, and, and why go into the gr grueling grind of yeah. the, the graveyard shift and, you and can all get that. Into, yeah, yeah. the midnight shift yeah. and everything. Yeah. So yeah. check out Park. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they may have something to offer you for you newcomers that are coming to be. Definitely. Uh, Nurses, doctors, any of that stuff, or maybe want to get a little bit of uh, our, our feel pay, for it. Yeah, yeah we, you know, we pay uh, our wages are very competitive, tops mm -hmm. in the industry. So mm -hmm. we take if, take care of the patients financially. We do offer some benefits too. Mm -hmm. So it's it's pretty flexible to come work with me and John, yeah. and, and we'll have it's a lot not of fun. That bad. We try yeah. to keep it's it fun, you know, <laughs> like loose. Yeah. yeah, we're not. We don't want you know. We're not. It's not an uptight company. Or we're work hard, it. play hard. Exactly, That's what it is. the you way just, it is. If you don't enjoy your job, you're not. You're not working. That is true. You're just not working. That's true. You guys um, have any people you want to give a shout out? I know you guys are complimenting uh, one another. Sure. Anybody you want to maybe, you know, give a little love to from your staff or anybody that was a mentor for you guys? Your parents or whatever. Yeah. Anybody. Well, definitely. Listen, like my, my parents are, are have been a big influence on in my life. Um, both, both my mom and my dad are, are very different. Um, my my dad taught me to always respect people, um, to, to work very honestly and ethically. And what industries are they in? So my dad used to be in the party store business. Okay. And then he ended up becoming a, a butcher for a while. Oh, really? My mother. I like actually, him. Yeah, he's. I love he's, cooking. That's why. Yeah. I you might know him. He's at that Kroger on 12 miles south and Evergreen. Oh, he's there for a I'll go while. visit him. I'll definitely <laughs> yeah. go. Yeah, uh, awesome. so my, my mom, though, she, she's more the entrepreneur in the family. Yeah. She started selling clothes out of our basement in our Southfield home. And, awesome. <laughs> and then from there, it turned into two clothing boutiques in Southfield. We used to have a... What was her names? Uh, classy Fashions and Glamorous Boutique. Okay. Right on 11 in Evergreen? Yes, exactly. Okay. Remember the, uh, yeah. the one by LaFendi? Yep, 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 yep. Cool. Yep. So, yeah, so she, she was in that, she's in that fashion industry. She was in that industry for about 10 years. Now, I did learn a lot from her. Unfortunately, those both businesses end up going up bankrupt. So, but she was always Jeff. You got to push. You got to strive harder. Like, don't don't get discouraged. She was always in my ear about shooting. You know, for the stars, yep. really. Um, so those, to me, those are the two big influences in my life. Plus, your dad always had a knife in his hands. So. Oh, he was like, he was ready to use it. So <laughs> right, right. I better listen to. Yeah, him. no problem chopping up meat, right? <laughs> right? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, my parents, most parents, you know, are big influences on their. On their children my parents have always just been supportive of what i want to do as long as it makes me happy yeah. uh, as long what as industries are they in um so so my mom had to raise uh six warriors yeah, busy. yeah. <laughs> that's a job yeah. that's a job well, that's an industry she was she, she was, was a parent we, we didn't have the internet back then it was the phone book looking for lawyers <laughs> yeah. yeah i promise you <laughs> i promise wow. you the distita she cooked with oh, she just she still till this day doesn't know how to cook for less. Oh, of course. She still will make big pots and tell everyone to come and grab my mom. Like, call me, call to... me next time. <laughs> yeah. Call me next time. Yeah. And, well, Drew, uh, Drew will come and your of brother course. will come and eat. That's why he's here. I'm going my way to Jonathan's house right now. John's house. <laughs> so, pops. yeah, my, my father's in the hospitality industry. Okay. Um, he's been uh, in, in hospitality hotels since like the early 90s. Uh, he's mm. been an entrepreneur for a very long time and that's resonated and, and blended down to me and my brothers. You know, everybody, it's always been, find your niche, yeah. right? You know, Salim's a lawyer and he's a realtor. My brother Tommy's a CPA. Two of my brothers um, are pharmacists. Uh, another brother that I have, he works with commercial appraising. Find your niche. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you wanna if you wanna dive in with two feet, just go for what you know. Yeah. So, so my father's always preached that. Um, and I've always been really appreciative of that. And it's nice to always have support where no matter the ups and downs of work, you know? Of course. Mm -hmm. Shout out to any staff members, any managers. Yeah, I would say an underrated shout out should go to the doctors who are at least willing to give us a yeah. chance, right? Mm -hmm. Jeff has yep. mentioned how competitive this is. The doctors are out there, and I'm sure if they're looking at this, they'll know who they are who've given us a chance with referrals. Yeah. 
you know, the doctors out there, we ask for a chance. If yeah. we're providing the service that we're claiming we can, yep. then we're making your life easier as a physician, right? You know mm -hmm. your patients are being cared for. You know your patients are getting the most attentive care. Right, the ability. So, oh, yeah. you know, we thank every doctor who's giving us an opportunity, every discharge coordinator, every discharge The patients, nurse, their you know, families that believe in us, that still call us yeah. to this day. Hey, where are you guys? Patients are a really big marketing yeah. uh, tool. I mean, oh, yeah. if we do good, if we do good with them, if yeah. they have a family member who's happened to fall, broken yeah. a hip, or any number of yeah. reasons, you know, we've actually gotten quite a few calls. We don't know you, but you took care of so and so. Yeah, and that and that means the world to us because that's a lot of word of mouth. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. What about uh, just closing it out? Give a couple of minutes of uh, of uh, encouragement to people that are out there that w would be a, would have been in your shoes, you know, eighteen months ago. Like you being just working, doing your thing, and then deciding that you want to get into your own business and launching your own business. Yeah, I think I would say if you really, really, th if you feel like you want to do it and mm -hmm. you don't have enough support system around you telling you you should do it. Call Jeff. Yeah, call Jeff. <laughs> call <laughs> Jeff. He will, he will tell you all the nice things you want to hear. But I'm always on call. <laughs> I, time, so. I honestly would say. For me, it's the first time I've ever had the opportunity to be in entrepreneurship. Yeah, it's been the most challenging and rewarding. Yeah. And I, guys, we haven't even scratched so, the surface. Right. Yeah. I, sure. I think this company is gonna stay around for a very, very long time. We wish you right? the best that you Thank do. Thank you, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, and it's only do. been it's only been a year. I and love the logo, by the way. Yeah. Shout out. shout out to shout uh, out to Chris Abro. Chris Abro for this. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Our first I helped draw it a little bit. Yeah. Our first Take interview, right? That was yeah, yeah. That was, yeah. Creative media. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Chris, Chris hooked it up. Um, He's Chris. actually going to be a guest uh, host on the show oh, really? pretty soon. Yeah, I know. I he, talked to him about yeah, that. Yeah, he, he's that. he's interviewing. <laughs> he's doing some interviews. <laughs> it's going to be wild. So what do you? What about you? What do you want to? I mean, for me, like like when John called me, like listen, guys, you know, follow your dreams. Don't get discouraged. You know, work hard. The main thing is you got to work hard. You got you got to have an agenda. Yep. You can't just think it's just going to come to you. You got to go out and grab it, you know. Yeah. You can't just, some people just, like some, you know, the, the millennials, I don't want to bring them up. They're going to get bad rap. The microwave babies? <laughs> you know, they think, you know, some page, people think you're just going to become successful overnight. No, mm -hmm. it's a lot of hard work. Yep. Yep. A lot of behind the behind the scenes stuff, people don't know, like, how yeah. hard yeah. we're working to make this product. We grow. won't even fluff it. This is very hard. Oh yeah, no doubt. This is extremely difficult. Because you use yeah. books or mentors or, or video guys. Uh, the, get... I ask Jeff. I read everything that yeah. CMS Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. I read everything that um, Medicare has to say about the yeah. industry. I, okay. I'm a big compliance guy. Yep. I, we, we have we have lawyers and we have um, compliance um, officers that we work with, um, and I'm constantly constantly seeing what's changing in our industry, right? So we're dealing with the federal government, so there's a lot of things that are always changing and they're not always readily accessible. Right. So you need to go searching for that stuff to make sure you're doing things the right way. Yep. I, I enjoy reading them. Um, well, he loves Gary Vee. Gary Vee's the boss. Gary yeah, Vee has Gary v. been very helpful to He's me. good. He's great. A few yeah. people have mentioned him on our shows. It's, it's, yeah. he's I never knew who he was until John yeah. mentioned him. That and same thing. Now I told. do follow him. He's yep. the but boss. But honestly, like, you know what hypes us up? The Chaldean community in general. We see so many people doing so many wonderful things. Honestly, that's what motivates us. I mean, when I see, read the paper and I and I see one of our own doing something amazing in Detroit, yep. let's say, yep. or anything, I'm like, wow, I gotta step. We gotta step up right yeah. now. This is yeah. amazing. Look what our community is doing yeah. out here. Makes so. you feel good. Yeah, Makes you feel really good. Yep, let's be a you part. You wanna be of part of it, you know? Keeping up with the Joneses, keeping up with the Tukipne. Yeah, yeah yes. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yes. Yes. Cool. Well, thank you guys very much for coming on. Thank spending you guys. Your time sharing yeah. your story. Yep. Appreciate it, was it guys. Awesome. Nice to meet yeah. you. Yeah, to know. Thank we'll, you guys. We thank wish you, you some great growth, and uh, hopefully, um, you guys can maybe help me too. With yeah, a bit. man, I'm, <laughs> we got I'm, get, I'm getting run down, man. <laughs> we can stick the... around afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> we hope clear we the have, table. Clear we hope the table. We never need our services. Yeah. But we're we're going to put all of the information that was in here in the in the description. So. Anyone that needs to find them or, or needs uh, to reach out to them, the, all the information will be in the description, guys. Perfect. Thanks, Thanks. a lot. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks, guys. Thank you.